If you're selling in another country, then it's likely that you'll receive cash in a different currency. If the currency rates change, then your money in your own terms may decline rapidly. When the Australian dollar fell from being able to buy $1.05 US in April 2013 to only 90 cents in July 2013, then an American company selling goods in Australia would have seen an enormous decline in revenues once they had converted the Australian sales back into their own dollars. In March, if you sold $5,000 worth of goods in Australian dollars, it would have generated $5,250 in US. But in July, it would have only been worth $4,500, nearly 15% less. Now, if you have tight margins, then you just went from making a profit to a significant loss. You can hedge against sharp changes in Forex rates to reduce your exposure. If you are setting up a wholly owned enterprise, then you'll be taking on additional risk as you operate in that local currency. Your reporting needs to be consolidated into one currency. The same issue can apply on the supply side too. Products such as cars use parts that are supplied from all corners of the world. These may be paid for in different currencies, so your cogs are always changing. Organisations don't hedge for every possible Forex risk. The cost, time and effort to implement outweighs the risk reduction. However, when a company implements an expansion strategy, accountants will advise the CEO and board that there will be increased volatility in reported financial results due to currency movements and will develop and implement strategies to minimise and mitigate the risk. In 2017, Chevron lost the biggest tax case in Australian history when they were ordered to pay $340 million in taxes, penalties and fines. Chevron Australia created a US subsidiary called Chevron Funding Corporation in the state of Delaware where there is no corporate income tax on goods or services. This company provided an unsecured loan to its Australian parent. CFC borrowed at 1.2% but on lent the money at 9% which gave rise to $1.1 billion in profits that weren't taxed in Delaware. Chevron Australia had massively overinflated interest payments, which reduced its tax bill by hundreds of millions of dollars. Nifty, eh? Until you get caught. Transfer pricing relates to the prices set for buying and selling goods and services within a company, but across different countries. It is used by companies to reduce their tax bills, sometimes to amounts that are less than you or I paid in tax last year. This point has come into sharp focus over the last few years. The approach you need to take as an accountant is to ensure that the transfer of goods and services within your company is performed at market rates and stick to it. To recap, foreign exchange risks and transfer pricing are two common issues that accountants must deal with in an organisation that works across different geographical boundaries. You can hedge against volatility in exchange rates, although this does not eliminate the risk. Transfer pricing is a common accounting activity that only becomes an issue if unethical approaches are taken, where transfer prices are manipulated to reduce payable taxes. Keep the costs of goods and services transferred between business units at appropriate prices and you're fine and ethical.